Hello everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode of Toast to Pros Academy SQL Server Unlock Series. I'm Bali, with here we is Rick. Hey Rick, how's everything going? Oh, I'm having a good time today. All right, how's your day going so far? Oh, love being here. All right, likewise. I think so everybody who's watching us feels the same. So today is a very exciting topic. We're talk going to talk about SQL Server Management Studio, the tool which does all the magic. Tell us something a little bit more, Rick. I think it's more demo this time. Well, it's kind of how you drive SQL Server, you know, where your steering wheel, gear shift, and all that is, and you know how to drive your car. And it's really there to try to make your life easier. Do you want more space, less space? Do you want line numbers, or do you not want to see those? Mm -hmm. So you get to set preferences, as well as, you know, directly touch some of the things that you really need to get your job done. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, let's look a little bit more deep into it, right? Yeah. So all let's right. do some easy stuff, and then some juicy stuff that maybe some experts don't know, but would like to use. Yeah, this is really helpful stuff, so pay attention, everybody. So here, here's, right. here's a real basic one. I, I just want to look at uh, my location table that has only four records, so I type something really simple, like select star from location, and it's got a red underline, and it gives me an error because, of course, I'm in the master database, so I've got to set it to the JProco database, which is where my uh, table lies, and then, of course, it works fine. Now, Here's one of the most common thing that people get stuck with when they're brand new. And I say, hey, see this drop down? Change it to the right one. And they say, it's grayed out. I can't change it. The reason is, see this, this bar here that separates my object explorer from my query? On the right, I'm talking about what database I want. On the left, I have every database. This is my server view. Mm -hmm. So when you're on your server, you have every database at your disposal. Notice this is grayed out. Click to the right, it's enabled. Click to the left. It's grayed out. So I tell people, hey, click to the right. All of a sudden, you can see that. All right, that's a pretty basic thing. Um, another, uh, a common thing is if you have a lot of code, you know, you have some down here and some down here, and you're collaborating with somebody and you want to say, hey, line 47 is where your error is. Can you please look at that? You know, and you don't want to go one, two, three, four, five. You want to be able to have numbers next to each line. You can do that in the tools. Options, under text editor, under transaction SQL, you can check this box called line numbers, and you see you have your line numbers. All right, that's really amazing. Okay. Now, one more thing. This is something that not everybody knows. And I'm going to go over to the JProco database, and I want to choose a table that has quite a few records in it. Well, more than like 200 records. So let me go to the current products table. Let me right click that, and let me edit the top 200 rows. Okay. And I scroll down and you go, well, I want to edit row number 201. It's mm -hmm. it, the row 200 number one, is, there's 500 records in here, but I only get to see 200 of them. And what if it's record 201 you wanted to edit? Mm -hmm. And what if frequently the record you want to edit is in the top 500, it's not in the top 200? And this is SQL, you know, trying to save you some time because you don't want to pull up every record of some large tables. Sure. So the sample size is too small for me. I just want to change SQL's default sample size. Well, that can be done. First, let me close out of here. That can be done by going to Tools, Options, and then down here, I'm going to change the top N from 200 to 500. So I'm just changing my preference. Now when I right-click this table, it says Edit Top 500 rows, and now I can go down and I can edit row number 201, which is right here because I was going to change the price from $84 to $95.25. The change is now there and saved. That's a really good trick down there. That helps a lot of development time for, for developers. They don't have to write, you know, cumbersome update queries. Very nice. Do you have something else up your sleeve? Yeah, I got the most common one, and it's a little less than intuitive for somebody who's not an object-oriented developer, and that's kind of how the whole studio works. Now, see this object explorer on the left here? Let's say I have a lot of code, and it's taking up space, and I want more screen space. Of course, I can hit this little pin to undock it, and if I hover over it, it appears, and if I hover over it now, it dis so I have more screen space. Some people will find that annoying, and they like to dock it, but they accidentally, instead of clicking the pin, they drug this bar. And they go, uh-oh, this is sitting out in the middle of everywhere. And you would think by dragging it to the side, you get your thing back. But it takes up too much space. So what you do is, as you're hovering over this, you notice there's a compass right in the middle? Mm -hmm. Take your mouse and put it over the 
the arrow indicator to the left. Boom, and it there will it dock is. It. You right. just let go. It's one of the few things you select, by not by clicking the mouse, but by letting go of the mouse as soon as you get over the compass direction that you want. Eric, that was some really good tips around SQL Server Admin Studio. I hope all the viewers also liked it. Keep the feedback coming through. Until next time, thanks for watching.